Like many other countries with a tropical climate, Sierra Leone goes through six months of heavy rain and has the highest annual rate of rainfall in the whole of Africa. Heavy rains in the country are therefore not an unfamiliar sight, but they can be fatal. The last flooding disaster took place in Freetown in 2015, where several people lost their lives and at least 3,800 people were displaced. A pattern that we see increasingly across different parts of Africa, including Ghana, Nigeria, Congo and Angola, but in the early hours of the 14th of August 2017, it is not mere rain that led to the terror that unfolded. Sugarloaf Mountain collapsed unexpectedly under the heavy weight of rain and mud, destroying all in its path. Many homes were destroyed, and estimates of up to 1,000 lives are believed to have been lost. The event marks a trio of disasters in the last three decades to hit the country. It's barely been two years since the end of the Ebola epidemic, which took place in Sierra Leone and neighboring countries Guinea and Liberia. Sierra Leone also went through a devastating civil war from 1991 to 2002. One quarter of the population were displaced from other provincial areas where the war began, finding their way to Freetown, which was at the time a government stronghold. Freetown is at peace now, and with a rise in population numbering 7 million people, it has become a bustling city over the years, the streets filled with market traders, carpenters and other city workers. I have travelled from the UK to Freetown in what is my second trip to the country to see firsthand the work of physicians across continents, a dedicated group of volunteer medical professionals who over the next few days will be operating to support those affected by the mudslide and flooding disaster in the city. Six doctors from Sudan and Saudi Arabia have flown to Freetown to provide aid. For some of them, it is their first time travelling to West Africa. The next day, the doctors and I make our way to the emergency relief shelter near Regents, a mountainous area approximately 15 miles east of central Freetown. On the way, we see Sugarloaf Mountain. We decide to go down to the area itself to see the devastation caused. As we arrive, the scale of what's at hand becomes apparent. It's hard to believe that at least 400 to 500 homes stood on this mountain. Not only does the steepness of the hill make it astonishing, but looking at what is in front of us, you wouldn't believe anyone had actually lived here. Everything is gone. We can see the crevasse over there. You see that one on the far right over there? Yeah. That's what fell over there. Yeah. My God. All of them, whoever was here at that time at 5 uh, a.m. in the morning, definitely died. What has been left are beleaguered emergency services and broken relatives to pick up the pieces. Whilst here, we come across Mrs. Michaela Sisse, who was a resident near the site. She was in her home the moment the mudslide took place. It was really terrible. The site was very terrible. If anybody say I saw what was coming out of the hills, it was just like water, mud, fire, everything. It was terrible. This is my house. It's like the only house left standing. And we woke up about 7, 7 a.m. to a loud noise, a very loud noise. And my husband thought it was a plane crash. And I said, no, it was a vehicle falling down. 
It was so loud we could not see anything coming down from the hills. I had to take my children, run outside. So Saeed, we're here at the site. We've seen the devastation that's been caused. Uh, you and your team and colleagues are here. What are your first reactions to this? It's a huge tragedy. Um, as you come to this destination over here, you go past massive houses, really lux luxurious houses. Um, and when you come to the site, you're told that there were the similar houses that were taken away by the mudslide. Uh, what, so over 500 people have been killed, 600 are still missing, and 3,000 have been displaced because of this. And because of what has taken place, another 10,000 have been evacuated just in case. Seeing the devastation up close, it's hard to imagine that there's so many people that are still underneath the rubble. And many more people are at clinics like at Regents who require medical and psychological assistance and counselling, which is why it's so important to see groups like physicians across continents delivering that very much needed support. We make our way to an area where almost 200 people affected by the mudslide are staying at a nearby school. find out from other volunteer workers that the doctors from physicians across continents are the only source of medical support in the area. It is therefore crucial that we set up as quickly as possible. I work as uh, a GB consultant. Uh, I got an invitation from a physician across the continent uh, uh, from the UK to uh, as a volunteer, uh, as a doctor here in Sierra Leone uh, after the disaster happened. Uh, uh, so I want to try uh, uh, to have uh, more experience about Africa and about uh, uh, cases here and to help uh, people here. Meanwhile, word has spread that we are in the area. We find swarms of people filling up in the compound outside the clinic. Amongst those we are seeing tend to be women with young children. I speak to Dr. Huda Mohammed Harun Adam, who specializes in pediatrics. You have to see children, and uh, there are uh, the main problems are respiratory problems and malaria. And uh, some children, uh, or only one or two, they have a sickle cell disease. Tampa Sese has come with his only surviving 15 year old son. His two other sons died during the mudslide. Uh, this problem, uh, this accident, Monday. So we'll do malaria test, give him antibiotics, and uh, we'll do the dressing every day. Uh, so tomorrow you will come with the bag for the dressing. No Maybe it's the place of water, huh? Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. But it's not only parents with children. We see streams of heavily pregnant young women entering the camp who are within miles of a working, functioning hospital and are in need of urgent support. I am Dr. Sahar Lari coming from Saudi Arabia after an invitation from a physician across the continent. I'm consultant to Obigaini and uh, came here mainly after the disaster. We arranged an emergency trip for the support and for uh, medical support and other uh, uh, moral support for those uh, people after the disaster. The, I've seen this morning one lady who's coming because of very high blood pressure. So we have to give her some medication to lower her blood pressure because this is very dangerous on her pregnancy and herself as well. And uh, we give her the drugs and we make sure that the blood pressure settles down. 
and we asked her to go and come back after three hours to make sure that she is stable because she cannot walk to the hospital. Except you have to send her to the yes, big hospital. Yes, she has to go to the hospital. Yes. Tell her, I mean, explain to her, all of this must be done. We will write it for her. She has to know because if she's an RH negative, she has to take an anti-D as well. Okay. She will go down to our clinic. They will do it. When? Are they open today? Tomorrow. Can you tell her to go tomorrow? Yeah, I will but tell her to go there. Yeah. They, will, they will check her HB. Her hemoglobin is, might be very low. Yes, we have technicians there, now. lab technicians. Now. Now? Yes. Where is left with her? Okay, not in the clinic. She can't go to the emergency in the hospital. We have lab technicians. You know, our, the doctor that he was here, Dr. Koma, he said if you need any help, this patient she needs to go to the hospital. This is such cases needs to go to the hospital. Well, let her go. By her own? Maybe she will collapse in the street. She should be a in the disaster, we are just seeing them for their medical issues, for the um, support, like uh, any if they have any problem with the, because with this weather and with this disaster, sometimes it's very hard for them even to find the simple things. So we will give them the, the vitamins. See, it is raining now as well, so it is making the things even more difficult to reach to us. So we were planning even to go to the hospital to see more patients there, but here is the disaster what happened. And uh, we have in our country, we have a very uh, rich uh, food, which is the dates. So we are bringing for them. And we are trying to give for the pregnant woman some dates. It will give them the nutrition and uh, it will give them as well the, the feeling of that we are coming for them. And this is the main issue. The rain begins to affect the team's ability to work effectively, grinding the clinic to a complete stop. <laughs> Once the rain finally stops, I and the medical team head out to a tent where there are many children who survived the event. I am told that some of the children have lost their parents and have become orphans. Others have been made homeless with some members of the family. Sprawled across Freetown are a mass of shanty houses built from iron metal pieces and wood. Many of these houses were constructed by those fleeing anti-government rebel militia. These shanty houses, otherwise known as Pambodis, are a gradual phenomenon and feature of the landscape, playing a huge part in the city's congestion. Along with rapid urbanisation, Houses which are not being reinforced into the ground are being built on mountainous terrain that is simply not suitable for building on. That people now have to build further atop these mountains shows the urgency of the situation. I speak to Mohammed Sharif, who works part-time with physicians across continents here in Sierra Leone and owns his own construction company. He explains why this has become such a huge problem. Just after the war, everybody went out to try to get their own little settlement where they can stay and uh, live with their family. Some people came from the provinces, they never returned home. Uh, some people grew financially, so they think, think it wise that it is nice to be uh, living up these hills because of the climatic condition here. But they forget the fact that drawing to this particular type of place and building this type of house without proper security is, an, is danger. We can't blame them because they don't know. They think that uh, by building these houses, they're building it with cement, concrete and stuff. They forget that these places are not that strong. They are not well properly checked before they build these houses.
The extent of the city's poor town planning and lack of implementing environmental guidelines can be seen in the places where those affected by the mudslide and floods are staying. While some of the doctors are working in the clinic, I wish to learn about the victims who are being housed nearby Sa'id Elementary School, the victims whose stories have not yet been told. I'm here outside Sa'id Elementary Community School, which is not too far from the clinic which has been set up by physicians across continents. Now, 180 of the victims in the mudside event are actually staying here and there are many women and children who are lying on the floor as well so the conditions aren't necessarily very good i'm hearing um, but i'm going to go inside and meet some of them and see what's happened and, and hear their stories as well what should be a functioning elementary school has now become a type of home for those who have none the catch is that the conditions here are shocking with poor lighting ventilation and space there is about, there are about 180 women and children uh, who are living in this uh, big uh, one room in this uh, school. Uh, they are suffering from malaria, from uh, chest infection and psychological problems. Most of them suffering from insomnia. They are afraid to sleep after their disasters because the disaster happened as a night. Now they are, they, are, they are homeless. Inside, I meet with a woman in her early 40s named Adam Ature, who has three children, Daniel, Sento and Daniela, and I hear how she escaped the mudslide. What's up with me, with me, Kikinde? Well, that day, they didn't they come. They didn't they come all oh, day, they, they start working at 2 o'clock the night. By then 5 o'clock, the man do work. Now she got to work in the room. See, now he grab, now he say, Adam, I said, today the rain is I said, the water is in the veranda. I said, I said, I can't go. I said, OK. Now he go. Oh, he go. I let him, he had no take, now grab. The rain, they come. The grab I don't grab, this night he grab, he fell at me, this fell at me. Then they grab, he they make fire. Then they left in the bed, he load on. Then the they come, at the time for push down, they load on go inside, no, no, they grieve. I don't know, the rain they soak me with me, because they, this day in the bed, they sleep. All the fence don't cut, that's him, the man no day. Go. Go by me, pan body, we say they load on. This week, I know she am. The bed is laid the bed is laid the bed is laid The water is overcome in the place. I saw a crap, an empty dress, a crap, a can of streets, a cry, I go call this mommy. People do all the go, I go find them in the day. Then they know they see I'm quick. You know, all the, the, the bed go jam inside the stone, now they take her down, filling her, don't go cover her. Don't see the night, don't see the cover her. If they try to call me, come here, I know they hear you. They don't come inside, they cry. If they call me, I know they are the people that don't go out and go help me for friend this week here. Now he don't hear the boys, so he they cry. Now he don't go see him. Now we say I don't go do that, now he don't feel as well. I don't feel as well. Now he 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 don't call the motor guard and can't take me, don't go with me in the hospital. I tell him, they have the people that don't pull pull the diamond there, they don't hold and die. This is not happy with me. Nothing is left, nothing is not pulled. I've back with us and come here. Next time, queues at the mortuary have been filling up as families look for loved ones. Whilst more sick people visit the clinic, we speak to the government overseeing recovery and emergency efforts. 
Well, it, um, it's a collaborative effort. We, even though I'm in health, but it's a collaborative effort. We, um, the government is um, building low-cost housing facilities. And physicians across continents and I make a special visit. Are you still jogging? You still running? Yes. There you go.